Hi there, my name is Donald. This is Soft Roading the West. I do backcountry adventures in my Nissan Frontier. This is my Topo Toppers Mesa camper. While well, you can get out and camp in one of these without doing anything on the inside, because the bed is part of the camper, you can just throw some gear into the bed of your truck and you're ready to hit the road. I have been slowly working on building out a, an interior for this camper. And this is part seven in the series. In part one, we just took a look at some goals and ideas I had for the camper. In part two, I sealed the tailgate for dust and cold, but mostly for dust. In part three, I built a sort of storage bench and couch on the passenger side of the camper as a little spot to take a nap, to sit when I'm inside in the evening and for some storage. In part four, I insulated the walls. In part five, I did wall covering that failed. <laughs> In part six, uh, I built a cabinet on this side of the camper, which provides uh, counter space and some interior storage, as well as encompassing this cargo door to create uh, what is eventually gonna be my kitchen. And that's what this video is about. So we'll get to what's inside of here a little bit later in the video. First of all, uh, I just wanna talk about the whole general concept I had because I knew I wanted to have uh, my 270 degree awning on this side of the camper because my fridge is right here inside the back seat. I wanted to have my kitchen here well underneath the awning rather than cooking on the tailgate. That also means that I don't have to walk across the area where I'm prepping food when I get in and out of the camper. I also, if I'm in the middle of cooking and I need to get in the camper, I don't have a bunch of cooking stuff in my way. I wanted to just keep that separate and have my kitchen area completely enclosed sort of in this space right here. My idea for this was to DIY construct a table that would fit right inside of this cargo door that I could take out and that would somehow attach onto the truck. Or possibly something like those Max Trax holder tables that maybe you've seen like Andrew St. Pierre White uses one on his Land Cruiser that is just part of the side of the vehicle drops down right here. Between this fender and my fuel door here, I could not do one of those max tracks tables, which I thought would have been a great idea. I also need, need some place to put my max tracks. Then I started coming up with some ideas for building a table that would sort of rely on the tire for some of its support, similar to the tailgater tables you may have seen. But ultimately, I was not happy with any of the approaches that I came up with for making my own table that would fit inside that door and that would be somehow supported by the truck, the tire, the truck frame here. I spent quite a bit of time uh, fiddling with a number of different solutions. Wasn't happy with the way any of them turned out. My best attempt at my DIY table resulted from discovering that Unistra would wedge perfectly between my tire and the frame of my truck, but I couldn't make this as solid as I would have liked. It's probably serviceable. The fact that it sort of leans down just kind of annoys my eye. I was really trying to make this work because it was just all material that I had in the garage. I had the Unistrut, I had those aluminum tubes, I had this plywood. With a bunch of other things still to go on the camper and some travel coming up soon, I decided to just go ahead and compromise and just get the tailgater table that I was trying to emulate in the first place. I had planned for my DIY table to have a stove burner integrated right into the table and after testing to figure out a way to mount this to my new tailgater table, I proceeded with a more permanent installation of the burner. Now I don't really know if cutting out an opening in this uh, expanded steel is going to impact the uh, integrity, but I figure worst case scenario, I can weld in some support structure if I need to. I think it seems plenty solid. So I just kind of want to see uh, what happens when this is, you know, actually heating something up for a while. I don't know, that powder coat looks fine. And the table is warm, but it's not hot. I mean, it's, yeah, it's hot right there at the closest, but 
Yeah, it doesn't seem to really be pulling a lot of heat out. I used high heat paint to recoat the raw cut edges of steel along with the heads of the bolts that secure the burner grate. This obviously does not fit in the cargo door of the camper. I've been carrying it here in the back seat, just bungeed onto my fridge support there. That is self-supporting like that on the tire, although this does have a additional arm that can be used for additional support. Which makes this really, really solid. I found this cast iron single burner at my local propane shop. You can find similar stoves like this uh, on Amazon. I just bring my propane bottle over from the bumper, hook it up, this works out great. Now, the one disadvantage here, and you may have already thought of it, is that uh, I don't really have any protection from the wind for the flame here. So I experimented with adapting a folding wind block for like backpacking stoves. I added some hooks to it. However, attaching this thing onto the table is really, really a headache. So this is not gonna be my solution. This does work and I have been using it. It's helpful if the wind is not blowing. I'm gonna keep working on some other ideas I have for a wind block. Uh, if you have some ideas, I'm certainly open to uh, any suggestions you may have on what I might do to protect this burner from the wind. I got the steel version of the tailgater table. They also make uh, an aluminum version. I got the steel version in case I needed to do some welding on this. As it turns out, I didn't need to. The aluminum version is uh, more expensive, but also quite a bit lighter weight. I'm really happy that I was able to integrate a stove right into this so that when I take out and set up my table, I'm also taking out and setting up my stove. When I'm putting away my table, I'm putting away my stove, getting a couple things done at once. The main thing that's annoying about the tailgater table is these little legs that you need to put on that sort of uh, support up against the tire. They've got these little spring-loaded buttons that hold them in place, and they are really, really hard to pop out. I use one of the knobs to push on that little button to release it. Oh, Charlie. So you saw part of the interior here uh, where I was storing my water uh, in the at part six where I built this cabinet in here. At the time, I hadn't done anything with the uh, kitchen storage space. Now, I didn't film putting this together, although it's pretty simple. I basically just built in a shelf here to divide the space a little bit and create a support for these wire basket drawers that I found on Amazon. This was like... 15 bucks, I think, uh, allows me to get all my dry goods sort of organized and make good use of this vertical space here. Underneath here, I can put my skillets. I also have some of my longer utensils and the hose for my gas bottle. My little pan rides in there. And as usual, my coffee kettle is there inside the pan where it has been writing for years. And I added this, this is basically a wall mount magnet. But I thought it'd be a good way to get my utensils, knives and things like that um, up out of the way and not floating around. So I'm not having to dig through um, a bin or a drawer or whatever. And this has worked out really nicely. Now I haven't completely used all of this space. I could, you know, build even more sort of holders, organization, whatever into here. But using this so far, it's been working pretty well. I can get a surprising amount of dry goods into here. I love that everything is just right here, accessible, my entire kitchen, fridge here, pans and dry goods here. 
stove and table right here, water right here. This is more or less the vision that I had for my kitchen uh, when I ordered the camper and had them put this cargo door on this side. This was what I wanted to do. And while it didn't come together exactly the way I was, you know, vaguely visualizing it, I'm pretty happy with uh, how close I came and with the functionality of it. Now I've yet to get out on a really long trip uh, with all of this, but I will be getting out on a week long trip next month and I'll be able to really put this to the test. All right, still to come in the camper build series uh, will be part eight, which will be all of the wiring beginning to end. If you have any questions about what I've done here, just post them in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future build episodes on the camper and thank you for watching.